What's up, everybody? My name is Lauren Flaherty. I'm here with Mike Galvin and Mario Rossi, and we are going to play a couple songs for you. The first one is a new song. It's called Abandoned. What would you think of me if I fell, let down my guard and showed you my private hell? If I didn't smile and cried for a while, would you want to leave me scared of all my sudden honesty? Leave me a If my foundation cracked and scars show, see I'm making it all up as I go. If I needed time with stronger arms than mine, would you wanna leave me scared of all my sudden honesty? Another song from my newest record, which is called The Southie Chanteuse. It's a wicked hot album. One, two, three. If you got something to say, boy, don't pretend I am in your way. Do it with the band. No. 
soldiers out of my way What's fair in love and war is not a sense And your reinforcement to everybody We're gonna love hard, play hard, fall hard Battle scarred I Love hard, play hard, fall hard Battle a little ditty called 3 a.m. And 3 a.m. is what we call a nightclub song. And we usually try to play it as close to midnight as possible. And what I say during 3 a.m. is something very prestigious, even though it's a song about drunk dialing. And that is because I went to Boston Latin. And how I apply my immense education is because when I started there, it's very competitive. And they say, not all of you are going to graduate. Look to your left, look to your right. One of you will not complete the program. And so, when we are at the club around midnight, I say, please, everyone, look to your left, look to your right. Who is going to drunk dial tonight? Thank you. I'm here all week. It's 3 a.m. I call my friends. They hate me now. I tell the drama. So much drama. I should take a bow. And they tell me to be cool. Man, I really Still like me. It's 3 a.m. I call my ex. He's having sex. I apologize and tell a lie. What will go wrong next? And I say, no man, it's cool. Cause I really want to be cool. Is she a hooker? Right, all right, 
for four days might and still don't get far well I'm far too deep just such love being sleep I'm such an artist was that a hooker Galvin on the bass. <laughs> All right, up next we're going to play an oldie but goodie. This is a breakup anthem. I swear I did not write it after too many drunk dialing phone calls. Really, I didn't. It's unrelated.
because I just bought into something. Uh, it is very hard to not rock out heart sick more than we did. But we are in the small room and we are playing for this intimate audience, so we accommodate. So, in the sense of that, we're gonna do a little Depeche Mode cover. We're gonna strip it down from the auditorium to this lovely, Thank you. 
Words like violence break the silence. Come crashing in into my little world. Painful to me, pierce right through me. Can't you understand, my little girl? an original song called Just Ray. Please know I never wanted this. I always keep my promises, but there's something I need to do. Too close to be close by far too far. These faults are part of who we
Thank you. I would like to ask the screaming hordes here to please excuse the gentleman for a moment. One more time for Mike Galvin and Mario Rossi. I'm going to bring things down even more. Um, so I'm a singer-songwriter, and sometimes I am very lucky to be able to do band sets with awesome musicians such as this. Uh, but sometimes I'm not, and sometimes people just like to hear a song stripped down a little bit. So I am going to play a couple for you right now. <laughs> Sometimes your picture me I'm walking too far ahead Your call then to me I can't hear what you have said That you say it goes slow I fall behind The second hand unwinds If you're lost you can't
just move on I sent your things where they ready to come back up? All right, I'm going to bring the guys back up because it's more fun with them. <laughs> Mario and Mike, back in the amphitheater. So we are going to play a very edgy song right now. You'll know when you hear the title. <laughs> Boy, I can't see you anymore because you are never sure. such a man 
appreciation. Let's sing a song about fashion accessories for girls called shoes. And yet they come back. It's awesome. <laughs>
ray of sun I find in old places Hang on hope in the meantime I will play Just a hot pair of dolls Just blow up away Just blow up away Just blow up away This is going to be our last song. I want to thank everyone who tuned in. Once again, I'm Lauren Flaherty. I'm a local singer-songwriter. I'm up here with Mike Galvin and Mario Rossi. Let's hear it for the guys. <laughs> Man, you guys are cheer too loud. You make me insecure. Like everybody in the back is cheering for the guys. You gotta watch out. Okay, so up last is going to be a song from my first album. It's called What Makes an Angel. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, just a, it's just a ballad. It's got no rock feel whatsoever. It's, it's a shame, really.
Actually, I can do two if you want. Lying in my bed, I hear the claw 
I'm going to go because he wanted to keep it all radio. Yeah. Okay. But now, you know, I was right. I was right. Yeah. It's it vindicated. But that no, was really fun. There was a lot of good energy there and a lot of positives. I'm just being funny. Um, but it, I did take it personally about the public access. Because that was my baby. It's like, we got to integrate radio and the TV. You should. And... And then I took a couple of years off. I go back there this year, and it's like, oh, we have two public access panels. I'm like, who do you think created this? <laughs> I'm on one of them. And I, John Harrington from Steely Dan was there. Okay. Guitar player. So that yeah. was fun. And John Tesh was supposed to be there, but I had a train to catch. So, so where did you record this? I'm going to ask you on air. Okay. Uh, geez, I wish I had a copy of the new one. I feel bad. Um, Where's the new one? Jeff, when you edit, you can put her new CD cover up. Because yeah. she didn't bring it. These days, you just grab it off the internet. Are we rolling? Uh, just about. Just about rolling. The newer one's kind of a, a better story because I, I recorded a lot of it at home. You remember when you recorded this, though? Yeah, I recorded that locally. Where? Um, uh, Sanctum Sound uh, in uh, Alston. By S South Station. And then um, with like a, a couple of friends. March 7th. I know, we're getting there. <laughs> ah. My only response to that. I, I, can, I think I can hold it, actually. I, what is that? That might be easier. This is weird. Actually, the Christina Aguilera. <laughs> yeah. Huh? That's why I was broke. <laughs> You know, um, Jeff, the, yeah. the, this angle camera. Did all you right. record there? Yeah, it's it's That's silly if I'm talking and I'm like looking at oh, whatever it is. I don't like nice. it. Okay. All right. Um, change it. Maybe get it up right here. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Just, uh, just focus it on the on the talent here. I'm just on the gonna talent. Wait. I'm just gonna talk to people. I'm not gonna look at the camera. Cool. Are we rolling? Let me know. Yeah, just, t just talk to people because we're gonna be. That's better. That's much better. Thank you. That's good. Good. How about that second shot where we've got everyone? Okay, we're rolling. Jeff, try the second shot where we have everyone. Second shot, me included. Thank you. Let's start here. I don't see it on the... Uh, Thank you. There we go. Hey, it's Mar uh, March 7th already, 2012, and I'm here. Is this the Lauren Flaherty Ensemble? This is the Lauren Flaherty Band. I'm Lauren, and I have Mario and Mike with me. Mario Rossi, to your right, yep. and Mike Galvin. Yes. To your, to his right. Yes. Bass, drums, guitar. Now, you have a lovely voice, and you play Thank guitar you. really well. Why would you take on such work and not have a, a, another guitarist or a keyboard player? I wanted the challenge. Um, I've played with different musicians on and off, and I found that you know sometimes guitarists come and go, and so it was never an intentional decision. But at a certain point, I realized, you know what? It's now or never. And also, I dared myself to start soloing in public because I'd already been playing for ten years. Now or never. <laughs> Well, cool. Good for you. I mean, it takes a lot of gumption. Beautiful photos. Who did the photography on this album from 2006, What Makes an Angel? Um, that was taken by one of my favorite local photographers, Peter Urban. Um, he actually has a hall dedicated to him now um, from the mayor in the South End. Um, so I, I feel like this is an awesome part of his legacy because we got the pictures in the Globe. Mayor Menino? Yeah, he helped um, get him the hall. He's a nice guy. He's a previous guest of our show, so we love him. <laughs> so you I did like this, that. You did this album, and, and angels are always big, so that's good. What makes an angel is a nice concept. 2006 at Sanctum? Mostly at Sanctum, yes. And I've done um, two since then, including the last one that was done mostly at home, which was really exciting. So when was the second album released, and what's its title? The second album was in 2009. It's called You Don't Know Me, because I was feeling sassy. And then um, my third album, which came out a couple months ago, is called The Southie Chanteuse, because I'm from Southie. And um, I got a nice review uh, 
a little while ago where the Weekly Dig uh, mentioned that, and I said, all right, if you're giving me a nickname, I'm going to run with it. <laughs> You'll have to get Jackie DeShannon to come into uh, Boston. Your, your dad, John, would know Jackie DeShannon. Put a little love in your heart, and uh, what the world needs now is love, and she has an album, You Know Me. And um, she also has an album called New Arrangement, where she had a country song called Betty Davis Eyes that, ja that Kim Carnes had a big hit with. I know that song. But the country version is, is risque and body and wonderful. Mm. Um, so we've gone from you don't know me to you know me. <laughs> and you are sassy, but you're fun. Sassy, sassy, but fun. So you recorded the new album at home. I recorded it mostly at home. Um, basically, last winter, I got snowed in with a DVD of one of my favorite artists, Imogen Heap, about how she did her record at home. Um, it was the storm that came right after on the Boxing Day. Um, and They're all a blur to me, sorry. Yeah, it, it was basically, we were in already for the holidays, and then we were going to have to stay in uh, after Christmas, and I had to cancel some studio time. I decided I was going to lose it if I didn't record somehow, and I started recording at home. Did that for a couple months, and then I accidentally had a new album. It was accidentally cool. on purpose. <laughs> accidentally on purpose. Now, there's a lot of tracks in this. How many tracks in the second album? Um, the first two have ten each, and then um, the last one's actually an EP. It has six songs because my goal is to put out more material more often. So, the first album's 2006, second is 2000... 2009. And then the new one is 2012 or 2011? 2011. Okay. So in 2012, we'll get another EP. I'm aiming for it. We'll cool. see. We'll see. Like I said, the IBS conference was this past weekend, the 71st. It's like the oldest radio conference in, um, in the country, maybe the world, college radio. And they're at Simmons College in November. So you can go to ibsradio.org. But that's around the corner, and there's a ton of DJs from all over. That's awesome. That play records, so you, know, you just hand them out like candy, right? Uh, get their names and emails, of course, but you should talk to Len over there about um, seeing if they have performers. I will definitely. Because if you can set out. up in the hallway and just like bang it out, yeah. you know. Or at least till they kick me out, I could just be in the hallway. <laughs> Let's talk to your bandmates. Let's. Um, Mario Rossi, no relation to Martini and Rossi, are you? No, no, no. Okay, so you're from Canada. I am. And when did you come to America? This America? as opposed to the North America? Um, 1995. Oh, so you've been here a while. Yeah. OK. Yes. You look very young, so I didn't think you were here that long. Yeah, 95, and I've, I've been a US citizen for a few years, too. Oh, and what bands were you in prior to Flaherty Band? Um, I played with a bunch of, a few local bands. And none of them really had any big names. And I played a lot. Um, I grew up in, in Florida, so I oh. played a lot of bands down there. Original music? Yeah, always original music. Cool. Um, we're going to talk to Mike in a second, but this band should do a tour of Cape Cod. Time After Time was very nice. Uh, John Morelli was Cindy Lauper's original drummer from Blue Angel. Before she became Cindy Lauper, she was in Blue Angel. And they were on Polydor, and he is, I think, one of the managers of something, Boston Beer Works down there on the Cape, which I think they have bands sometimes. Um, and her manager was Lenny Pizzi from Columbia Records, and I think he lives in the Cape now. So, I mean, just having her jam with you, because her people are down there, you know? Connect up with them. Um, why not? Where are you from, Mike Galvin? Somerville, Massachusetts. Oh! That's where I, that's, that's where I live now. I grew up uh, north of here, Tewksbury. I was brought up in Somerville when I was a wee boy, really? a wee lad. And I did my first cable TV show in 1979 on Day Street in Davis Square, right next to the post office is where the original access station was in Davis Square. Wow. Now, do you play the clubs in Davis Square at all? Uh, I have done some, like, open mics and stuff around there. Yeah, with the Burren? Burren, yeah, yeah. And then across the street is the... I should know these things. Josh, what you? They Thank usually you. don't have live music, but uh, they yeah, used there's, to. Like, there's like a bunch of bars around there. Yeah, Johnny D's. And yeah. of course, Somerville Theater. Yep. And um, we'll have to get this interview to the Somerville News. Sure. I mean, you, get, you get a hit on all the papers, the Somerville News. Get them your CD, especially if there's a Somerville guy here. So this is your second gig with the band. Pretty much, yeah. Second live gig. And the second and the first of the 
public access radio tour. You're going to do Somerville Access next and Cambridge yeah, CCTV. CCTV has something called bandwidth. Mm. So you bring your music to them and they play it over the bulletin board. It's really worth doing. Yeah. So they move. So um, they play. I'm a member there, but I don't even know where the new studio is. I just mail them stuff. Um, CCTV is over near MIT. Somerville Cable's in the old firehouse in uh, Union Square. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know where that is. Have you played the Club Bohemia at the Cantab? Yes. Mickey Bliss. We're actually playing there on June 2nd. That's awesome. Because <laughs> guess who helps do the, uh, the blog for them? You? Yeah, that's right. Awesome. <laughs> I used to, in my, old, in my last life, I used to book Mickey Bliss, and now he books everyone else. Isn't that funny? I've, I've been playing uh, shows with Mickey Bliss on and off for, I think, since that album came out. So. Well, he's awesome. See, yeah. I mean, everyone knows everyone in the community, yes. you know. But what he's done, he was at the Kirkland. What he's done for this community by going to Central Square really is amazing. Because he gives everyone a shot. Yes. He's a great keyboard player, you know. I've seen, um, I think it's the organ trio. It's fun. It's really fun. You know, when you're recording a record, someone should ask Mickey Bliss. I could ask him to be on my next record. You know, just have him come in and play the keyboard because he's so good. He's really good. Yeah, he is. Um, so, all right, that's one date. You're doing Club Bohemia in June. Mm -hmm. He's booked up that much. Wow. Yeah, we uh, we were lucky, actually. I We have a friend who's coming to town we wanted to play a show with, and we said, we need a Saturday night and a good location. Let's book it out in advance. And he got right back to us. It was so cool. Have you played Maddie's yet over in Saugus? I haven't. The Kowloon has big concerts at the Kowloon, but they bought Maddie's, which is over near the Dinosaur and the Burger King on Route 1. You know it? Yeah. The old blue light, like a country bar, it's now a rock and roll club. So you go to the Kowloon, ask for Phil Hopkins, uh, and that's a new venue to play. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening. Um, it's just a neat place, and I think everyone should videotape everything you do. Yes. But the public access TV tour, go up to Woburn, go up to Stoneham, just find the producers that do music and, and, and say, we were on the music closet because this is a legendary show, you know? Yeah. Um, so, Mike, we want to know, what bands were you in? Uh, I've been in bands since, like, 91 or so. Just a lot of, like, local... Somerville? Uh, Lowell, um, Tewksbury... Boston, it's kind of like spread out around. Lowell, UML Radio, they used, they had the Pixies there. In fact, it's rumored the Pixies recordings there, some went on their albums, I'm not sure. But UML for a long time has been doing live music. You know, University of Lowell Radio? Yep. And then Brandeis, WBRS would have live bands, and MFO would have on, uh, on the town with Mikey D. So these are great, like, college radio live broadcasts. Mm -hmm. I was like the 26th band on BRS in like 1983. It's ridiculous because they had the numbers on the wall, but now it's way into the thousands. Wow. But, you know, it's just interesting looking back, but you get a, like a digital recording, like you get a DVD here, so it's just the tour. Um, we used to play out a lot, my band, and, we, and one of the agent's secretaries said, how do you get all these radio things? I said, I just call them up and get on them. It's just neat having your roster, you know, Club Bohemia, radio, television. It just looks good in your press mm -hmm. releases. I think. I agree. <laughs> when did you pick up the guitar? Uh, I have been playing. Oh. I have been playing guitar now for 16, 15 years. I'm not. You gonna sound do great. The, I'm not going to do the math, but I've been playing for a while. <laughs> Thank you. I was you over much. on the computer, but I heard everything. <laughs> yeah, it Thank sounded you. really good. Awesome. Thanks. And what what is the sound? Anyone can answer this. What is the sound? that this band has, because the Pretenders had a sound, and Chrissy had her thing. But this is different, and I, I like her voice a lot. It blends nicely with what you guys do. Do you feel that way? <laughs> I, so. I, I would probably say indie folk rock power pop, but... That's nice. I like that. Indie folk rock power pop. That should be it. There you we know, go, then. There we, yep. <laughs> the Lauren Flaherty Band, indie folk rock power pop. That is cool. Done. <laughs> I think, I mean, just, it, 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 that's accurate. See, I put you on the spot because it's a tough question. It is. Yes. <laughs> you know, what's your music like? It's my music. It's me. No one can sound like it. It's no really one will come good. to see me play anymore, but it's, it's original. <laughs> it 
It's too original, too good. But no, you, you, you people have struck a nice balance with the covers and with the originals. It's very pleasing so that people should catch on. And Cantab is a good place. Does it have its own crowd now? Because I, I don't go down to there too much. It does. Um, the upstairs has a lot of walk-in traffic where they have the cover acts for the night. But I've, I've played downstairs a bit, and I've gone to a couple shows there. It's, it's pretty good, especially on the weekends. It's, it's pretty good. You know Little Joe Cook who used to play up there? Oh, that, that trio, very familiar. That very trio familiar. is half of my band and half of Little Joe Cook's band. Candy oh. left Little Joe Cook, and he took my... My musicians, Jay Cooper on drums and Scott Cooper on guitar. So if you ever want to hear what I sounded like, go upstairs. I mean, seriously, those are my awesome. friends. And, you know, but they're great, aren't they? Yeah, I will, I'm going to do it. You can go up there and sing with them. They're that good. <laughs> like Ian Lloyd from Stories will do Brother Louie downstairs, then he goes upstairs and does Brother Louie again with the band. It's, it's great. Have you ever jammed with them, a Little Joe Cook? You've ever gone to Little Joe Cook uh, nights? I've seen him play. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah. He's the guy that like sits on a stool and... Well, he's in his 80s. Yeah, he yeah, might yeah. be 90 now. He's got the really high voice, right? Peanuts, uh-oh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh-oh, yeah. peanuts. Yeah. Uh-oh, might be time for me to go to dinner, but that's okay. Um, it is. Um, talk. Right. Tell us about little Joe Cook. Well, he's good. He's, uh... Hello. He doesn't talk on the phone much <laughs> during interviews, but, uh... <laughs> No, yeah, the uh, song that I saw him play was, uh, was it uh, You Make Me Feel Like Dancing? Like, that's his, like, staple song. It, maybe this isn't the same guy. Um, no, well, that's a Leo Sayer tune, okay. but uh, Little Joe no, Cook I mean, had Peanuts. No, it's his song, obviously, but, uh, yeah, he's, like, that was his thing, and he sings it, like, really, really high. Yeah, and he would do a lot of he's groovy like, things. He's, like, heads down, and he's just doing it, yeah. He's just an original. His band's great, too. Well, he had his fif that 50s yeah. hit, Peanuts, and he didn't get paid for years and years. Frankie Valley actually covered it. <laughs> That's the roommate. Yeah. So, you know. Um, how dare you interview, uh, interrupt our interview. No. Um, anyway, are you having fun? See, I just, it's laid yeah, back. Yeah. We just have fun. Yeah, yeah. For all eternity, the phone call's on there. <laughs> Mike Galvin, Mario Rossi. And Lauren Flaherty, I knew your name. I just had to make sure I got the other guys right. I yeah. did. Um, here, the Lauren Flaherty band, which is indie, folk, rock, power pop. Yes! <laughs> I like sunshine pop. Do you do any sunshine pop? No. What is your favorite sunshine pop? We could oh, I mean, it's hard for me to say. Keith, 98.6. That's a great, great sunshine pop. Sunny by Bobby Hebb has got to be probably my all-time favorite. Sun, pa, sunshine Pop, Sunny, uh, you know, uh, but Jerry Ross was a great Spanky in our gang, uh, great Sunshine Pop producer, but there's so much the Cousels, the Rain of Park and other things, that production, you know, that demo tape became the hit. It's crazy when that happens. Yeah, that was the 60s, you know, um, Artie Kornfeld, they just made a demo and they put it out on whatever, MGM, and it became a smash smash monster hit it sounds so incredible the sounds coming out of that record are amazing uh, we uh, i don't know how much time we have but let's okay we can ramble um yeah so what's your favorite power pop lauren uh, my favorite local power pop artist would be blue um he's been around here for a oh, while the producer yeah yeah because i i like uh, he can sing he, he can sing. Um, I met him last year at the conference, the Rethink conference, and he was really nice. Um, I know he's doing a lot of songwriting and producing now, but I, I still like his old records. And I, I don't know anything about him except pop. that he produces an air traffic controller. Yes, he does. He They're does. my friends. Yeah, oh, cool. Do you know them? I, I think we're friends online. I you don't guys got to do a gig a with show. air traffic controller. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I definitely have mutual friends with them. Oh, they're, they're, um, they're very good pop, yeah. very good power Yeah, pop. I've heard I good things. Them heard really good things. Yeah, Jeff Monroe yeah. is their brother. The three Monroe brothers, but there's Dave. Um, it's kind of like the spearhead of the band. And Jeff runs Arlington Cable. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, go up to Arlington TV and talk to Jeff of the Monroe brothers. Of, you know, um, There's all these great cable TV stations. And, and I think you know what you did here tonight was great. What do you guys think for Power Pop? Oh, what's your favorite music, Mario? My, uh, my favorite Power Pop? Or music, anything. It's wide open, whatever you want. Um, type of music? Sure. Ambient. Nice. Drums with ambient music. Yes. 
<laughs> no drums. <laughs> Chris, our engineer here tonight, is a drummer, too. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yes, he's a drummer. He's very good. And what about your music, Mike? I like rock, and then I'm kind of spread out every, everywhere. I like a lot of film music, too. Yeah. Jerry Goldsmith. Yep. One of my favorites. Planet of the Apes soundtrack. Play it before you, you yeah. open your show. Just yeah. put it on for 10 minutes. You should. It's an awesome idea, right? Yeah. It's one of the greatest soundtracks of, in history. You can play that soundtrack to almost any movie, and it blends in perfectly. Try it. You know, like The Wizard of Oz and, and Dark Side of the Moon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Planet of the Apes works for any film. <laughs> it's just, Goldsmith's a genius. There's just, yeah. those sounds. That's what would make a great record. People taking the sounds from Planet of the Apes and just cr recreating that kind of ambience behind your pop music. It's just a wonderful formula. He's, I'm glad you like him. Good. Yeah. Um, we're rambling and rambling. Uh, the band is called the Lauren F Flaherty Trio. No, the Lauren, F Lar Lauren Flaherty Power Pop Ensemble. Power Trio. <laughs> the power, the, the cream, the uh, cream, not Led Zeppelin, because Robert Plant doesn't play guitar in the band. But um, I'm trying to think of the other trios. It's, it's tough getting old. Nirvana. I like Nirvana. Power trio. Do you do any Nirvana? Not today. We could, though. Later. Yeah, you should we throw a little later. Nirvana in because it, 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 it's just so popular still. Yeah. It, it, it never really went away, and then it somehow came back without going away. It's kind of crazy. It is. Thank you so much for being on the Music Closet on March 7th, a wonderful Wednesday night here in the Boston area in Winchester at Windcam. Thank you, Jeff Dearman. Thank you, Thank Kevin you, Russo. Thank you, Chris. Chris is an excellent drummer. You should check out his band. Maybe do a gig with them. Who knows? Things are good. Thanks for being on the show, everyone. Thank you for having us. Thank you, everybody in the control room. <laughs>